Hello, I'm Anil Goody. I'm one of the consultants in reproductive medicine, surgery and assisted conception at the Homerton Fertility Centre in London. And today I'm going to talk to you about something more basic. And this is about follicular size and when should you trigger. We're looking at cycles of clomiphene and letrozole. We're trying to find out which will be the best size of follicle and the best time the endometrium would grow when you decide to trigger the follicles. This was in a study done in 2012, published in Fertility Stability, titled What is the optimal follicular size before triggering ovulation in intrauterine cycles with clomiphene on letrozole of 988 cycles. A retrospective analysis between 2004 and 2009, first cycle of IUI for a variety of indications, clomiphene 100 for 5 days, day 3 or day to day 5-6, letrozole 5 mg a day, ultrasound scan and a chart assessment. The timing of HCG was not standardized. The fear is that if you give HCG earlier, you may cause your luteinization. Studies in 1980s and 1990s suggested that the trigger should be given between 16 and 18 millimeter. We know from data that in clomiphene cycles, there is a wider trigger between 18 and, uh, and 30 millimeter. What did this study tell us? The study told us that the optimum size of the follicle for trigger in a clomiphene cycles may be about 23 millimeter, in letrozole may be about 22 millimeter. No single, that was mean diameter, no single size follicles would give us the best results. Endometrial thickness was different for different size follicles. And that is again important. Now, what are the commonest things you see? you end up coming across cases where you see follicle has reached 18 millimeter, endometrium is only seven. Oh, that's thin endometrium. But constantly we forget that endometrium growth is linked to follicle size, is linked to estrogen in the system. And again, we have to come away from this fixed protocol. When the follicle reaches 18, it's time to trigger. It's time to start the tr triggering in a natural cycle because that's not what would be happening in nature. And I'll ask some of you, why don't you track a cycle and see when ovulation occurs, especially in cases of thin endometrium. And you'll see in some cases results that will surprise you, believe me. Now, what we know is that there is an additional one millimeter of endometrial th thickness with a follicular rise of 0.5. Also we have seen that when in clomiphene the follicle reaches 24 millimeter and letrozole at 24.7 millimeter you see more of endometrium of 9 millimeter. Pregnancy rates are higher when lead follicle reaches about 18 to 22 millimeter and that's what the study showed. Also we know that pregnancy rates are better when there's a thicker endometrium to the increased size of follicles. The logic is simple. Larger follicles produce more estrogen and this could be leading to a thicker endometrial thickness. In this study, clomiphene and letrozole were not compared and that's one of the weaknesses of the study. The other weakness is that serial scans were not done. But it does give us an idea about follicle size, endometrial growth and success rates. Again, sit back and have a think. If you see a thin endometrium in nature, on day 13, follicle size 18, or your clomiphene cycle, or a letrozole cycle, the first thought is not that there's something wrong with the woman. Are you scanning and triggering a bit early? In the next few cycles that you do, give a woman a chance to see when she ovulates spontaneously. And in some cases, you will see, just before ovulation, the best endometrial thickness is observed. 
This is something which I have learned through time and it has benefited me and my patients. Thank you very much. I hope you can share this talk to as many people as you can. Bye-bye.